officially failed. Meghan was furious when Harry's book flopped spectacularly and was rated the worst book about the royal family. Hello and welcome back to the Royal Family News YouTube channel. According to the latest analyses, more than a week after the publication of Spare's memoirs, Harry is facing a sharp decline because these memoirs no longer seem to interest anyone. Online reviews give it a 93% rating due to its terrible content. The book contains a lot, it must be said. I mean, Harry settles scores with the royal family and also reveals some pretty vulgar things. And sources confirm that Meghan Markle is not a happy camper right now. This book could help him make millions of dollars, but ironically his whole family finds themselves in a very dangerous circle. Revelations aimed at increasing their protection from the royal family have blown up in their faces, as Taliban fighters demand payment of Harry's debt. Meanwhile, the royal family is rather indifferent to the book. They maintain their silence and dignity, while King Charles and William and Catherine continue to carry out their duties as usual. It's like a knife cutting through Meghan and Harry's ambition, because they expect to fall out with the firm. And I'm sure Harry loves all the publicity and PR. For the first time in his life, he truly surpasses his older brother and makes headlines around the world, and he's even taking center stage over Meghan, who it seems is just staying away from all the hype surrounding the publication of the book that she helped to write. So what exactly is Harry going to do when all of this attention stops and Harry has to go back to being just Harry once again? And what exactly is Meghan Markle busy scheming? Is he gonna come down to earth and realize that he is all alone in this world because his friends have all left him? Will Harry finally figure out that all the millions of dollars that he got from Netflix when Penguin Random House amount to absolutely nothing if he doesn't have a family and friends to enjoy it with and especially if Meghan Markle takes a big chunk out of it thanks to the divorce settlement and where are Harry's next millions of dollars even going to come from? I think he exploited his family as much as he could. I don't see how there could be a revelation coming. So what exactly is Harry's plan? What should he rely on? I'm sure Harry appreciates this level of importance right now, but how will he cope when the cameras stop rolling, when the interviews stop and Harry has to return to where he lives? It looks like Montecito has been evacuated, so where will he go and what will he do, and thanks to the sale of the book, will Harry actually donate the millions he pledged to charity? Now, Harry claims to find it cathartic to air all his family's dirty laundry, but I don't even think he knows what that word means, because catharsis involves a whole web of emotional, neurological, spiritual and physical responses, and I don't think, based on what he says he has already experienced in the past or probably in the future, he will be able to experience this sensation. I just find a lot of Harry's stories very hard to believe. And honestly, folks, he exhibits many of the symptoms of a sociopath. He's as bad as Meghan, Harry found it cathartic to tell his story to the world, he said. Well, okay, Harry, good for you. But what about your family? And what about all the people whose lives you put in danger? What people need to understand is that deep emotions cause constriction of the larynx and esophagus, resulting in a change in voice. But did anyone notice any changes in Harry's voice during this emotional discussion? Harry has had numerous interviews with a bunch of famous people and has never demonstrated any emotional reactions. I mean, we feel a lot of anger and resentment, but still, have there ever been any changes in Harry's voice? Broken voices that would suggest feelings. Well, that would be a no. Ever since Harry was a little boy, there have been big warning signs about his behavior. Harry has a really violent side. His cruelty towards animals and wildlife is appalling. And I know that his father, King Charles, tried many well-documented attempts and approaches to help him, but obviously nothing worked. And let's forget Diana, Harry was like this before he died. That can't be his excuse. Then, when we consider Harry's love of drugs and alcohol, we find a very dangerous man indeed. The sooner the truth comes out, the better. 
And Harry's army colleagues have already spoken out, because what he did to the girls working in Afghanistan went way beyond that dot he more than crossed the line. And why would they continue to hide Harry's misdeeds? The book is really just Harry's version of what happened and the objective facts seen through Harry's eyes. It's really just a bullshit guide. As expected, the book written by Prince Harry's ghost has come under scrutiny at all levels in hopes of uncovering some of the lies and inaccuracies. It didn't take long for numerous examples to call into question the veracity of this book. Many claims have already been proven false. And that begs the question, why hasn't anyone on the publication's staff or its own ghostwriter managed to verify Harry's claims? Feelings, of course, cannot be verified, but nevertheless, specific memories of times, dates and places can easily be verified. In the book, Harry details the discovery of his great-grandmother's death, dot he was at Eton and received a phone call from a courtier whose name he wishes to remember. And he also comments on the weather. Now the press and fact-checkers were keen to surprise him, and so they produced articles and photos showing that Harry was, in fact, not at Eton. In fact, he was with his father and brother on a ski vacation. And then when he's stuck, Harry tells us that, oh, his memory isn't great because of all the trauma he's been through. But that his versions of events have as much truth as the so-called objective facts. Okay, can anyone really be that stupid? Well, I guess so. I guess someone is that stupid, and that someone is Harry. The objective fact is that Harry was not at Eton to receive a telephone call from a courtier telling him that his great-grandmother had died. It is an objective fact that he went skiing with his father and his brother. So Harry's entire elaborate story about discovering his great-grandmother's death doesn't contain a single ounce of truth. The objective facts have their merit but Harry's memories have no merit. And if this was the first time Harry had lied, then we could easily attribute things to a bad memory of the events. But this is not the first time, or even the second, and if your memory is that bad, well, you need to hire a fact-checker, so you don't have to make these ridiculous claims that prove you're a complete idiot. And no, Harry, despite what Meghan may have told you, the truth is not what you say. Even your memories are not objective facts. But this is the Harry we know now, and the Harry we don't really like. He will never admit his mistakes and never learn from them. Harry will continue to blame others for everything in order to avoid taking responsibility. Harry, however, made a mistake in believing that anyone outside of his very small fan base would buy into this hot pile of bullshit, namely Harry's avoiding admitting that he had done anything wrong. And you, do you agree with our news? Please let me know your thoughts below in the comments section, and everyone can discuss Meghan and Harry too. If you favorited our video tonight, please like and share it with anyone who might enjoy it, and click the subscribe button below to get more videos from our team. Now, thank you very much for listening, goodbye and I will come back to see you in the next videos.